Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number one in the SSRF module titled Basic SSRF Against a Local Server. All right, let's get started. This lab has a stock check feature which fetches data from an internal system. To solve the lab, change the stock check URL to access the admin interface at http localhost slash admin and delete the user Carlos. All right, so our vulnerable parameter or vulnerable feature is the stock check functionality. And the goal of the exercise is to change the stock check URL to access the admin interface and delete the user Carlos. So we're going to copy that right over here, paste it, hit enter and let's click on view toggle word drop perfect and then create an analysis section click on access the lab to access the exercise this might take some time to render so i'm going to open up burp suite in the meantime i'll be using the professional edition just because it's faster however you don't need the pro version of burp in order to complete this exercise and I won't be using features that are only available in the pro version without letting you know first. All right, let's click close, hit next, start burp. Make that a little bit smaller. Put that over here and click on the proxy tab. All right, so in Foxy Proxy, set your browser to send requests to burp. And now when we click on view details, it should be intercepted in burp. And it is. All right, perfect. Let's forward this and this one as well. And look for the stock check feature. If you go down, you see that there's a product, the description of the product. And then there's a check stock feature that allows you to check if this product is in stock. So let's click on that. And again, it should be intercepted in burp and it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and send this to repeater and work from repeater from now and on. All right, going back to burp, let's make this a little bit smaller. You could see over here that in the stock check functionality, there is a parameter called stock API that is sent and it looks like it's a URL because you could see over here, there's an HTTP colon slash slash stock dot we like to shop dot net. So this is URL encoded. So what I'm going to do is control shift U to decode it and look at the URL. All right, so it takes in a URL to the application and it's running on port 8080 and the path to the stock check feature is slash product slash stock and then slash check and then it takes in the product ID. So anytime you see a URL in the application, you definitely need to test for SSR. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on send to see what a usual response looks like. And it tells me it's missing a parameter. That's probably because it's not URL encoded. So let's encode it again. Control U, hit send, and here we go. So a normal response is to get the number of items that are available in stock, which in this case is 388. So let's go back. The first thing that I will do is see if I could access the application itself. So I'm going to hit send. And it says missing parameter. Let's do control U to URL encode it, hit send. And it still says missing parameter. So it's likely that you can't call this URL without providing the parameter value to the stock that you want to check. So the next thing that I usually do is check if there is an application running on localhost. Of course, if this is not vulnerable to SSRF, the request shouldn't be accepted. So let's try first localhost, hit send. And perfect. So we do get a response, which immediately tells me that this is vulnerable to SSRF. I'm going to click on render. This is a feature that is available both in the pro version and the community edition. However, I've never gotten it to work in the community edition. So it might not be something that you could do if you're only working with the community edition. So I'm going to click on render and see. Let's go back. So we've clicked on render and let's see what appears to us. So over here, it looks like 
we're on the same application that we were on except that in this scenario we have something called an admin panel which we didn't have before now I don't have the source code to this application however what likely happened is that the same application is running on local host so locally on the server and the application does not require you to log in in order to access the admin panel because it's assumed that if you can access the server then you're already authenticated whereas in this scenario you're coming from an external perspective so in order to get to the admin page or any other account on the system you have to click on my account and we might be still intercepting this in proxy, so let's set intercept to be off. Yep, so you have to click on my account, enter your username and password, and then log in. However, because we're exploiting the SSRF vulnerability, and there's a trust relationship between the application and the server it's running on, we're able to access the admin panel as if we're logged into the server itself. All right, so if we go to raw over here and we search for the word admin, you could see that it, it's running on the path slash admin. So we're going to add that to our request. So let's make some notes over here. So to access localhost, all we had to do is visit the URL localhost. And then to access the admin interface, we looked at the source code and we saw that the path for the interface is slash admin. So this should work because as we saw in localhost, the admin is already logged into the system and we don't need to authenticate. So if we click on raw and then hit send, we should see the admin interface. Again, I'm going to click on render and see what I get and perfect. So the admin interface allows you to delete users and in this case these two users over here and in order to delete the users you gotta click on the delete button perfect so we go back to raw and let's do a search on carlos and see what the path is in order to delete the user carlos and the path is admin slash delete question mark username and carlos so let's make note of that Delete Carlos and let's copy that over here. All right. Again, in order to perform this attack, we have to go through the, S the vulnerable parameter and perform another SSRF attack. So let's copy this, put it in here and see if we successfully delete the Carlos user. All right, hit send and we get a not found so we might have made a mistake and i know what we did so this is and let's remove it from over here because we're going to use that for our script in a bit and save it and hit send again okay we get a 302 which is a, a really good sign that means that the request passed through and it's getting redirected to another page so let's follow redirection Perfect, we get a 401 unauthorized. All right, and the reason we get a 401 unauthorized is because we're requesting the admin page from an external perspective versus from an internal perspective when we were exploiting it through the parameter that is vulnerable to SSRF. So in order to confirm that this has worked, we need to access the admin interface again. Let's go back and access the admin interface to see if it still allows us to delete the Carlos user. If it does, that means the Carlos user still exists in the database and that our attack failed. However, if it doesn't, that means our attack was successful. All right, hit send. And let's look for Carlos. There's zero matches. That's a good sign. If we click on render, here we go. We only have one user to delete because we successfully deleted the Carlos user. Perfect. So if we go back to our exercise, we should see the sign, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right. So we successfully completed the exercise by manually exploiting an SSRF vulnerability in order to access the admin interface that was available on the application running locally on the server and delete the Carlos user. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.